Welcome back to Expert on the Spot. I'm Dr. Zohar Karam from the Robert H. Smith Faculty of Agriculture, Food and Environment of the Hebrew University. I'm a food chemist working on functional foods and their mechanisms of action in the human body. I just came back now from Jericho from a workshop where we met our Palestinian counterpart and we discussed the sources of olive oil and of the olive trees, which bring me to the first question asked by Shelley. Shelley wanted to know which oils are best for cooking. And uh, this brings me to a wider question, which I hear a lot. Should I or shouldn't I use olive oils? There are a lot of rumors of olive oils. People think that olive oil burns before other oils. People think that canola oil, because it's published so well, is better. But actually, olive oil is best than other oils, because you never cook in high enough temperature in order to ruin the oil. Olive oil is the only oil that contains the natural antioxidants. Other oils do not contain antioxidants, otherwise people need to add the antioxidants. People talk a lot about the smoke point. This is a funny thing to talk about because there is no smoke point for olive oils. Some olive oils have smoke point of above 220 degrees, some other olive oils will have a smoke point of 150 and you cannot tell. Same goes for canola, for sunflower, no matter which oil you take it depends on the constituents of the oils and oils are different. But olive oils, which whichever olive oil you take, contains the natural antioxidants which keep the oil while frying, which keep and protect your food if you use the olive oil to cook with, and which add some beneficial characteristics to the food product that you prepare then. So if you ask me, it's better to use olive oil, and actually I would take 50 or 60 grams a day of olive oils, which I do. Emerald also wanted to know about oils, but she asked about the saturated fat in butter and the polyunsaturated fatty acids. So let's make a few things clear. Butter is not good for us because it contains cholesterol. No vegetable oil, including seed oils, soya, canola, sunflower, and of course olive oil, none of those contain cholesterol, so it's better to consume those foods without cholesterol. Other problem in butter is that it usually comes from milk and from milk it might contain hormones or um, other compounds that were added as a food component to the cow. Again, when, it, when we talk about the other oils, they do not contain them. And then we get to the question of the fatty acid composition. Polyunsaturated fats, it's actually what we in different circumstances call the omega-3 and the omega-6. These are the polyunsaturated. Everybody knows that we need the omega-3, so yeah, olive oil does contain omega-3 in a nice amount. And then again, if you ask me which oil to use, we come back to the question. We don't want a, a hardened oil, so we don't want margarine, we don't want butter, we want olive oil. And if you cannot get the olive oil, go for canola or for sunflower. But if I was to choose, I would always choose olive oil. I would use olive oil even for cooking and baking since you can choose the olive oil with no taste. You can use what we call flat olive oils and these oils are olive oil only they don't have the very apparent taste. At my home we make fudge, chocolate fudge with olive oil and uh, usually people talk about the texture and not about the taste because it does change texture. So people like the texture, they don't think of olive oil. Once you tell them it's olive oil they can feel the oil but before that they think it's common butter but don't use butter. Emerald also wanted to know which wine is better, white wines or red wines. So again, the question is, which wine do you buy? Some white wines are very good, some red wines are not so good. First of all, it's a question of budget, and the more you pay for the wine, the better the wine is. And this is a, a general question. The other thing is that you never want to drink too much wine, because then you may ruin your liver, you cannot drive, so... The, the, the first answer that I would say is that uh, consumption of wine in the range of glass or two a day is a very good. Personally, I prefer red wine, but that's bef mainly because of the taste. We do need to talk about the color of the wine. It is true that the red components of the wine can enter our body and can do miracles. There are a lot more compounds in the red wine than in the white wine, so if one really wants to drink wine only for health uh, purposes, then do drink the red wine but if you want to enjoy, drink the wine you like. Hadar wanted to know about compounds from wine and from olive oil and can they cross the BBB? So we need a s short explanation. The BBB is the blood-brain barrier. It's kind of a screen or a barrier that lets only several compounds go into the brain and make their wonders there. Some compounds can do it, 
some compounds can't. And this is truly a great question because it tells us that whatever we study, we need to ask those questions. Wine is good, but the compounds in wine, can they reach the target in our body? Yes, the red colors of wine, the anthocyanins, they can get to our body and they can also cross the blood-brain barrier and do their wonders in the brain. So Hadad, the answer in large is that your question is very good and this is the heart of many research works. And some compounds from wine and from olive oil can do all the way. We actually found that one compound from chickpea can go all the way and get into the brain and make you relax. So also in chickpea you can find those compounds. And uh, I think this is the soul and heart of our research, to see why the compound work and where it can work. I would say that uh, consuming all these compounds in our diet, not as food additives, but in a complete balanced diet, might help to prevent different the degenerative diseases, different cancer forms, so they may help in prevent them by going and getting to their targets and playing their protective role. So having them is better than not having them. Which brings me to the general and very important questions, how and can we use our diet in order to prevent disease, to protect our body, can these functional foods actually help us? And we had few questions about diet. We had a question about the vegetarian diet. We had a question about losing weight. We had a question about gaining weight. And the true question for all these, uh, the true answer for all these questions, it balanced. And then we had the question about five colors. So all, all of these questions, the, the actually truth is the five colors are there to make one eat a balanced diet, which is based on diverse ingredients. We need the red, red ingredients, we need the white ingredients, we need the yellow ingredients, we need the green ingredients, and we do need all the other colors too. But the colors are there just to make us remember that we need to consume a very well-balanced diet in terms of calories, in terms of protein, in terms of vitamins, and in terms of diversity. We need to consume as many food products as we can, and we need to keep them as close to nature as we can. The more they're processed, probably the more of food additives have been added. Of this diet question, Ellen asked, should she consume purple or white cauliflower? Well, Ellen, I think that uh, you should consume cauliflower in a good amount. And the purple cauliflower has more of the antioxidants. The white cauliflower have, on the other end, other very good compounds. Polly wanted to know if you can use a vegetarian diet as a mean to reduce weight or to lose weight. I think any balanced diet helps to reduce weight, but actually to reduce weight one needs to add physical exercise to the daily routines and uh, to eat the right amount of calories. It's not what you eat, it's more about how much you eat and how do you exercise your body. Ronnie wanted to know why the research focuses on the uh, processed foods. Well, actually, Ronnie, I don't know. We don't work on processed foods. We work on the natural ingredients. We work on the uh, chickpea, on grapes, and olives. So we don't work on processed and, uh, But still, there is a good reason to work on processed foods. I think that the invention of uh, low sugar sweeteners helped a lot in preventing diabetes cases. Today, we have reached a place where people know how to use uh, sweeteners and we look for natural ingredients that once added to the diet help to prevent diabetes and even to treat in some cases but again this might go even further and we need to find out. Ronnie also wanted to know how to reduce the bad cholesterol and to raise the good cholesterol. The question belongs to these diet questions eat well, eat balance, and exercise. This will reduce your bad cholesterol and you will raise your good cholesterol. Eat foods that are very poor in cholesterol or that do not have cholesterol. This will help to reduce the bad cholesterol. In terms of bad cholesterol, and this is part of the research that we are working, we are looking for natural ingredients to add to processed foods. Mainly, this is the human nature. We can tell people that something is not good for them, but they'll keep on doing it. They'll keep on smoking, they'll keep on driving in the unsecure roads. And we need to make sure that the roads are better for them. So we look for these functional foods, these ingredients that can help those who eat poorly to keep on eating, to keep, in, keep on with their routine of eating, to keep on consuming the foods that they like. But by adding those compounds into the food, at least we 
prevent some of the damage that the food can do. And in my research, we look for compounds that come from legumes, and in this we look on a chilbe, fenugreek, we look on compounds from chickpea, and from soy, and from ginseng, and from dates, and from olives, and from figs, and from... Uh, which one did I mention? All of them. Thank you again for all your questions. I really enjoyed answering them. For more information, you are welcome to visit my website. Or, of course, come to the Hebrew University, come to our faculty and study food and nutrition in the best place you can.